Moderna are out already, reporting a narrower than expected first quarter mm -hmm. loss, cost cutting, offsetting a steep decline in its COVID business. Moderna expecting to receive US approval for its second product, an RSV vaccine, in the coming days. Joining us now is the Moderna CEO, Stefan Bansell. Stefan, wonderful to catch up with you, sir. The stock is just about positive in the pre-market. Can you talk to me about how you're balancing cost cutting with investing in innovation, given what's in the pipeline? Sure. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. So very pleased with the quarter. We basically try to focus on how do we drive sales, how do we drive R&D, and how do we prioritize opportunities, which is why, for example, we announced that we are stopping the partnership with Metagenomy in research, in gene editing. Same thing if you look at the portfolio, we're looking very carefully at all investments. And the good thing about those you know, vaccines, like respiratory vaccines, is you only pay the phase three study once. So if you think about COVID, we still have to sell from COVID, but the investment in R&D of COVID has come down a lot. As you said, RSV, we are anticipating a launch this spring, but we're not going to do another phase three for RSV. So you can still basically have a lot of new studies going on, uh, reusing the capital you used to put in the other products before. And then if you look at oncology, as you know, we're in a 50-50 profit share with Merck. So Merck is paying half of a phase three study. So that's how we're managing. We're investing a lot in technology. You might have seen last week an announcement with OpenAI. We have actually more than 750 GPTs going, and that is helping us a lot scale the company across not only science, but also driving a lot of productivity in manufacturing, in commercial, in legal. So that's kind of how we're doing it. So, Stefan, let's talk about something that our colleagues here at Bloomberg are extremely focused on, and that's your RSV shot, which, according to our colleagues, some data is showing that maybe it doesn't last as long as others in the market. What we all want to know here at Bloomberg is whether that raises questions about the promise of your technology in treating other diseases. How would you answer that? So I would first say that if you look at the data, the duration of the other vaccines, they are very similar. So I don't think it is scientifically correct to say that one of the vaccine doesn't last as long as the other ones, uh, of the three, two that are approved and ours, if you look at the data. Uh, this will be debated at the CDC meeting uh, at the end of June at the, for recommendations. Uh, so this doesn't worry me. If you look at duration, the duration of vaccination is induced by T cell. If you look at our cancer product, the only reason it works is T cells, not antibodies. Antibodies don't have a role in cancer. It's about T cells going and attacking your cancer. If our vaccine technology did not have good T cell response, the cancer product will not look as good as it is. So I'm not worried at all about duration. Pretty much every time we speak, Stefan, I ask you, basically, have we cured cancer yet? So I'm glad that you went there, because that's been sort of one of the big questions and the hope for a lot of the, uh, uh, the mRNA vaccines. You have this melanoma vaccine in the works. What more do you have to do to get it sort of set up for the approval process to apply for that? And are you using artificial intelligence to expedite that? Great question. So if you look at cancer treatment uh, in melanoma, We've said that we need to achieve three things to be able to talk to the regulator about an accelerated approval. So the phase two data is the data we shared on the show you know, several times. Uh, we, we think duration. If you remember, in December, we shared the three-year survival. It was better than the two-year survival. So the difference between people on all treatment and people that are just getting ketidra is getting wider. So there's a very strong evidence that the drug is working. So that's number one. Number two is we need the phase three study to be substantially enrolled. And so we are working very actively. The phase three study started two months earlier than planned last summer. And so when we are substantially enrolled, we will meet that criteria. Uh, and it could be later this year. And the third one is the plant. Because of course, we need to file in the registration dossier all the information about the manufacturing process. The FDA, the day you file, is allowed to go, of course, audit your plant. That plant is being built. I had the chance to go there two weeks ago. The team is working nonstop, scheduling literally by the days, a bit like we did during COVID, during the pandemic. And so uh, I anticipate that potentially sometime next year, you know, the, if, if a regulator was willing to look at the accelerated approval file, we should have this product available to help a lot of people because one in two people benefit with no disease coming back or no deaths 
compared to the best drug available today to them on the market. Stefan, can you just give us a sense of, you talk about artificial intelligence. Everyone's talking about artificial intelligence. Could you just talk about how much that could expedite generally some of the drug production that we're seeing, just how much that could really get us to achieve you know, that cure for cancer, that cure for ALS, that cure for Alzheimer's. You know, it's funny, you're talking about sex and city. I sit around and I worry about these things. You know, what are we going to cure these things? So I'm just wondering, you know, is this going to be in our lifetime in the next couple of years because of some of the uh, machine learning? Yes, so I think there's a, a few things to tear apart in your, in your great question. First is, I think machine learning in academic labs, in research labs, in industry, is helping accelerate the understanding of a human body. If you think about you know, diseases like Alzheimer and other complicated diseases that we do not have solutions for yet as a society, it's because we do not understand the biology. We do not understand how the disease happened, how the disease evolved, and so we are just trying things, uh, and some work, uh, and, but very few work, most of them don't work because we're just trying and guessing. If you look at biology, once we understand how something works, then the industry can come with very, very good uh, actions to deal with those. So I think AI will accelerate the understanding of biology, which will be fundamental to bring new drugs. Then AI is already used to accelerate discovery in terms of what tool do you go after a disease once you understand it. At Moderna already, we have different chemical matters that are generated by our AI system that are helping us to accelerate the work that humans are doing. So it's an accelerator to the teams. And then there's a huge chapter on productivity. If you think about clinical development, phase one, two, and three, it's basically doing experiment in human, getting the data, finding the dose, doing more experiment, and when you have all the study done, you gather all the data and you submit by the regulator. My point is it's all about data. There are literally hundreds of business processes that need to happen, and I think many of those, if not most of those, you're going to be able to apply AI to shrink time, to go faster. An example we shared in uh, March in our vaccine day. The team wrote a GPT to help us to do dose selection. When you do a clinical study, your phase one, you try several doses, and then based on the data you get in the clinic, you decide which dose go into your phase three. Well, it used to take around a month to do that by having people and meeting and experts looking at the data. Well, we developed a GPT that basically get all the data from the clinical study and suggest to us a dose in literally a minute or two. That is already a tool that has been developed that I've seen uh, used at the company. That's just one example. So here you go, you shrink them off. And if you do that on the hundreds of business processes that have to happen in preparing the drug for the clinic, the clinical testing, the analyzing of the data, the communication with the FDA, I think you can save a lot of time. I don't know yet because only history will show us in the next few years. Can you shave 30%, 40%, 50% of how many years it takes you to develop a drug? I think it's going to be very significant. Stefan, we've got to leave it there. It's fantastic to catch up with you, sir. Amazing to listen to you talk about the efforts taking place at Moderna. Moderna CEO Stefan Bansal.